Have you ever made music with a Mobius strip? This one-sided, one-edged surface has a surprising role in the geometry of musical chords. Start by thinking of the pitch of a single note. Pitch corresponds to frequency and lies on a scale which is a continuous line. Here, higher pitches are to the right. We conventionally discretize the pitch space into scales. For example, the 12 semitones of the well-tempered chromatic scale. So the space of pitches is a line with distinguished intervals, just like the real number line with integers marked. But when we study the harmony of chords, it often doesn't matter what octave a note is played in. Any C counts as a C, middle C, high C, low C. They're all the same pitch class we call C. If we treat all Cs as equivalent, independent of what octave they're in, a mathematician would say we're interested in the pitches modulo the octave. This space of pitch classes is like a circle. As you go in one direction, you repeatedly visit the same spots, like clock arithmetic. I generated these sounds by combining all the C's in your range of hearing into C, and all the D's into D, and so on. This gives the illusion of an endlessly rising scale, even though what you hear is actually repeating. Now, onto chords. Play two notes together. What's the space of chords? We group two pitches as one thing with an x-y coordinate system, x for one pitch, y for the other. The main diagonal, where x equals y, represents unison chords. A diagonal y equals x plus a constant represents two voices a constant distance apart, like these parallel thirds. Parallel motion is literally parallel to the main diagonal. Diagonals further from the center correspond to a larger difference in the pitches between the two voices, like these parallel sixths. Or if the voices move in contrary motion, meaning one up and one down, we're moving perpendicularly to the main diagonal. But what happens if we take this space of chords modulo the octave? We want all C's equivalent, like our circle of pitch classes. So we have to roll up the space in both the x and y directions. Rolling in either direction gives a cylinder. Then rolling in the second direction gives a torus. It doesn't actually work well with paper. But you can imagine a toroidal space in which each point represents two simultaneous pitch classes. There's still a main diagonal, and we can plot a trajectory through this space. But this toroid space doesn't quite capture the musical idea we need. The problem is that on the torus, CE and EC are two different points. But the order XY versus YX shouldn't matter because CE and EC sound the same. A chord is really an unordered set of pitch classes, not an ordered pair. So to properly model chords, we need to modify our space so CE and EC are the same point. Let's go back to the whole XY plane for a minute because it's easy to see how to do it. Fold on the 45 degree diagonal. A mathematician would say we identify XY with YX. So this is the space of sets of two pitches. It's an infinite half plane where unison chords have the special honor of sitting along the edge. So how do we combine this folding idea with the idea of ignoring octaves? Because we want to consider pitch classes. We can fold first and then roll. Start with just a triangle because the rest of the plane just repeats. It's tricky with paper, but if you stretch the paper, it's possible to do. And the result turns out to be a Mobius strip. Alternatively, instead of folding first, you can first roll up the plane to get our torus, and then fold the torus along its main diagonal. That's trickier to visualize because the surface passes through itself. Here, red marks the main diagonal of unison chords, and green shows the chords with an interval of half an octave, what musicians call tritones. If we carefully merge across the main diagonal, again, the surprising fact is we end up with the Mobius strip. Every point on the Mobius strip corresponds to a two-note chord, ignoring octave and ignoring permutation. The edge represents the unison chords, with both voices playing the same note. 
And as you move away from the edge, the separation initially increases, but after the maximum separation, half an octave, you end up getting closer again. It's surprising to find the Mobius strip hidden in duets. Understanding it gives composers a way to see all the possible paths from one chord to the next. There are analogous spaces for chords with three, four, or more notes, but they get more complex and live in higher dimensional spaces. For three note chords, the analogous space is a kind of twisted triangular torus, just like this giant sculpture at Stony Brook University. The edge, which wraps around three times, corresponds to chords where all three voices sing the same note. The whole outer surface corresponds to chords with two voices singing the same note. And the interior is filled with a web of major, minor, augmented, diminished chords, etc. Visualizing these geometries gives you a whole new understanding of musical structure.